G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel. Over the past month, I've been recording and uploading a series of GSM decoding videos showcasing some of the basic functionality of the GR GSM software toolset for Linux. In part four, I demonstrated how it is possible to, to decode capture files containing recorded GSM data and have the information printed out in a nice human readable format for us in Wireshark. In the fifth installment of this series, I'm going to illustrate how GRGSM handles 2G based transceiver stations that have frequency hopping enabled by utilizing a binary called GRGSM Channelize. But before we delve into the practical portion of the video, you may be asking what frequency hopping is exactly. And that is a very, very good question. This PowerPoint slide from Carsten Knoll's 27C3 presentation titled Wideband GSM Sniffing explains how frequency hopping works. Typically, a mobile phone is listening on a fixed frequency for the broadcast control channel of a 2G based transceiver station. If an inbound voice call is initiated, the base station instructs the mobile phone to move to a standalone control channel on a fixed frequency. And then it tells it that it is being called and starts the encryption process. Finally, the base station tells the phone to move to a traffic channel on multiple unpredictable frequencies so the voice call data can be exchanged securely. So why is frequency hopping implemented on GSM networks anyway? This is also a good question. Hopping channels offer two main advantages over a typical GSM network configuration. The first one is noise resistance, the ability to mitigate interference from nearby radio frequency transmissions. The second reason, which is very relevant to this video, is for the increased difficulty in interception of data and voice traveling over frequency hopping GSM channels. This is where GRGSM channelize can be utilized to help us split the GSM capture file into its separate frequency channels with one file per frequency being outputted. We're going to need an additional piece of hardware for this tutorial and that is a software defined radio that has more capturing bandwidth than an RTL SDR. Some examples of wideband SDRs are the Hack RF the Blade RF, Lime SDR, and the USRP. And yes, SDRs that have wideband and capturing ability are usually exponentially more expensive than an RTL SDR based receiver, unfortunately. To see the remainder of the hardware and software requirements needed for GSM decoding, check out part one of this video instructional series. Before we get started on that GRGSM channelize usage segment of the video, I will give a brief demonstration of software defined radio sample rates and how they correlate to bandwidth in the context of capturing a signal. So I'll just proceed to open Cubic SDR. I select my hack RF1 and ensure that a sample rate of 10 megahertz is configured. This should allow my hack RF to see eight or nine megahertz of the RF spectrum at any single time. So I'll click on start and we can immediately see that there is two separate 200 kilohertz wide GSM non-hopping downlink signals. The first is operating on 1805.2 megahertz and the second is operating on 1809.2 megahertz. Now let me show you something quickly. An RTL based software defined radio has a maximum set stable sample rate of 2.4 megahertz. If I go ahead and configure a sample rate of 3 megahertz on my hack RF, it becomes immediately apparent 
that the RTO SDR cannot see enough of the radio spectrum to capture both of the GSM signals simultaneously. So this is the first GSM downlink signal, which is being transmitted by a Blade RF. And this is the second GSM downlink signal being transmitted by my Lime SDR. And we can see that the RTL SDR does not have enough bandwidth to see both the signals simultaneously. And this, my friends, is the reason why we need to use a higher quality software defined radio for capturing GSM hopping signals. Generally, these hopping channels are spread out over 8 megahertz or more, sometimes less. So let's move on to the next section of the practical segment. In order to use GRGSM channelized to separate each GSM frequency into its own output file, we first need to record and store a wideband capture file with GRGSM capture and a software defined radio, which in my case is a genuine ACRF. Please see part three of my instructional video series for usage of GSM, GRGSM capture. The command here that I'm about to run will look familiar to most of my viewers. However, the main difference we can see is that we have configured a sample rate of 10 mega samples per second, which should allow my HackRF to view and see about eight megahertz of the radio spectrum. And the second uh, difference we notice in this command is that I have, haven't configured the frequency to capture to match that of our GSM base transceiver stations operating on 1805.2 and 1809.2 megahertz. Instead, I've configured the hack RF's receiver frequency to be roughly in the middle of the two GSM signals due to the eight megahertz of visible bandwidth available, both signals will be recorded during the capturing process. So we can close cubic SDR now. Allow me to quickly set the scene hardware wise now. As we can see here, I have both my Blade RF2 and my Lime SDR Mini 2 operating each a separate non-hopping GSM base station. And my Hack RF here is going to be the wide-banded SDR used to capture, uh, to capture both of these signals. Back to the practical now. So I will just go ahead and hit enter on this command. And after about 20 seconds or so, we should have a wideband GSM capture file of about 1.5 gigabytes. Obviously, the more wide-banded you go, the file size increases exponentially. So now we have reached the portion of the video where I'll actually demonstrate some usage of GR GSM channelized. I will just send it the argument, the H argument. And we can see that all the configurable options for GRGSM channelized. So I'm going to copy and paste the next command because it's really, really long. And then we'll, I'll explain each of the components of the command for you. 
So first we type the name of the binary. We configure a sample rate of 10 E6, which means 10 mega samples per second, because that's the sample rate of the captured GSM wideband capture file. The center frequency is 1807.2, which remember was in, in the middle of the two GSM based transceiver station signals. Uh, the channelized output file sample rate will be one mega sample per second. The input wideband capture file is titled wideband capture file, uh, wideband capture.c file, and you can see that that is, exists in my home directory here. The output directory is just my home folder. And to finalize the command, we write the ARFCN numbers that each of my GSM based transceiver stations we're operating on. I'll just explain what ARFCN numbers are briefly. All GSM carrier frequencies correspond to a number called an ARFCN, which stands for Absolute Radio Frequency Channel Number. In my case, 1805.2 is a ARFCN value of 512, and 1809.2 is an ARFCN value of 532. So I'll go ahead and hit enter on that command. And very quickly, and very quickly we can see that there has been two files created in our home folder of about 100, 152 megabytes each titled out 512c file and out 532.c file. GRGSM Channelize has extracted each of the two GSM downlink signals and outputted them to their own separate narrow-banded capture file. Just to make sure that GRGSM Channelize has done its job correctly, we will go ahead and use GRGSM Decode to demodulate these two capture files and see if we can get some human readable data displayed for us in Wireshark. So I'll just copy the next command for GRGSM decode. And we'll run it by hitting the enter key. And we can see that we get a successful decode. Next, I'll copy the copy and paste the command to decode the second channelized output file. And we will run that command. And we can see that we have another successful decode. So yeah, that is really, really cool. So if you yourself have recorded a real GSM hopping channel downlink to a wideband capture file. What can you do with the channelized narrowband output, cap output capture files anyway? That, and that is a really, really good question. Um, I haven't got that far yet, unfortunately. But you will need to get your hands dirty with GNU Radio Companion. And in particular, this flowchart titled GRGSM Hopping Example.GRC. I have no idea how to reassemble the narrowband capture files to make a single coherent capture file. But this flowchart in GNU Radio Companion is how you could achieve that. Because Australia has no active 2G networks anymore, I'm unable to make a wideband capture file of real GSM hopping channels to play around with GRGSM channelized and the GRGSM hopping example GRC flowchart. So yeah, that's all 
about all I have for this video today, stick around for part six of my GSM decoding video tutorial series, where I'll be taking a deep dive into the ins and outs of extracting voice calls and SMS messages from recorded GSM data files. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Bye.